Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. I love it when I open a cigar box and I find these things inside. These little um, thin little veneer pieces. And you notice that this one is cut out because what I did is I decided to put a little veneer top on, ah, on this little scarf joint right here and I got it all glued up and um, drying now so this little veneer is going to cover that scarf joint that would be like a little line right there some people do the scarfs underneath the fretboard and that's a good thing too to disguise the fact that it's a scarf, but then the problem is is that you gotta like level this so that you don't get any bumps right here. So you know, both ways are good. I've done it both ways. There's no like right or wrong way. But this little trick here, I think is kind of a neat little, I mean, you can obviously you can paint, you could paint the top or leave it alone. A lot of times I just leave it alone. But anyhow, I figured since I had some of this at my disposal, that I might as well go ahead and try at adding a veneer. So I already like carved it and stuff like that, so I might have a little hard time around these edges. But uh, what I'm gonna do is just, uh, once it dries, I'll just take a file and file it down and kind of match the curve that I already got going on here. All right, wish me luck. And since we're talking about scarf joints, I'll show you my little jig. So this here is just a regular size of wood, the same kind of wood that I used to make my necks out of. And this one here, I'm not sure how long it is, it's about, um, this one here is eight inches long. This one here is 11 inches long. This little piece here is five and a half inches long. I got a little block here. And you can see how it's just been screwed in. So it's, it's glued and screwed. All these little pieces here. This has also been screwed and glued. Now you ask, what is the angle here? I'm glad you asked because I painstakingly measured it. And if you can see that, I don't know if you can or not, but it's about... 13, maybe 14 degrees. So this is gonna be the angle of your scarf. And this thing here connects to my little chop saw. And I will show you how I do that right now. All right, here is the rusty rusty dusty chop saw so before i get started here i'm going to clean it up just a little bit so you can see all right let's get started all right see this little fence piece right here take my jig the long side here and this little this little gap piece right here that's the part that I actually um, with a little clamp I actually clamp it on like that so I'll show you what it looks like See that? The clamp here is just holding this little piece onto this part. And it's nice and secure, it's nice and tight. And it gives me this angle here. And of course it clears the blade perfectly. So, it's fired up. 
So I was out riding my bicycle the other day and I found this nice piece of dug fur. So all I do is I just put this neck piece next to my angled portion here. Make sure you got to make sure it's not there's no tilt this way here like this action here and if you have a long piece here sometimes it'll go down here so you got to make sure that this is perfectly straight now I've, I've sometimes I've clamped it here but you want to make sure that the clamp is out of the way of the, the chop saw when it comes out here so uh, but I've gotten real good at this so I can just hold it right so I just hold it here keep your fingers out of the way don't want to cut your fingers off don't want to go through life like that. You think I'm funny, you think I'm joking, I'm not. Okay, so, holding it down, here we go. And just like that, beginnings of a scarf joint. Now we we'll glue it up. So before I glue it, I want to make sure that both sides are nice and clean. So see this is, see the underside here, how this is old and aged and gray and possibly dirty. All right, well, I'm going to want to take some sandpaper and attack that and get it clean because I want to glue this portion to it and I don't want there to be any compromise or any dirt or any paint or anything like that. So before you glue, make sure that both pieces are clean, free of any debris. So I took some sandpaper and I rubbed off all the gray on the back there and I sanded this part here and then I made, made sure I had a, like a perfect, perfect match right here. That there's no gaps, that all my lines are straight on both sides. It's kind of hard to see, but um, um, it's verified that there's, there's no gaps in there. It's like perfectly matched. So now we're going to glue it. All right, there's all sorts of tricks that you guys can do, that you guys probably know, and ways to do this better and stuff like that, and that's all, that's all cool. I know there's ways to do this better, too. Um, but what I do is I just put a lot of glue on it and there is no glue shortage and any of the stuff that squeezes out I can just wipe it off no big deal All right so glue both sides and then line it up best you can wipe off the glue on something that you're gonna throw away All right, now what I do is I, I just clamp it. And the way I clamp it is, so I have this top here and I want this top to be flat. I want this side, this side here and this side here to be the same so that there's no not a bump or a gap. And so all I do is I just put the clamp directly on that equal side on either, either side. So it's gonna be flat on both sides. Does that make sense? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So where that line is, now it, well, isn't that glue going to stick to the clamp? Yeah, it's okay. You can wipe it off first if you want to. It's a messy, but it's okay. No one ever said this wasn't going to be messy. So it's pretty straightforward, dude. It's not, it's not freaking rocket science. But now I have this, this side here. And y'all see how it shifted there? So you just go back and... Ah, sorry about that. Yeah. I never have problems until I turn the camera on. Now on this side here, I don't want to, I don't want to push it that way. So I just barely get it on the bottom, just enough to hold it in place. And then I'm angling it so so while it's wet you know I mean, you can still like move it around move it around move it around and inspect just make sure that all your lines are good wipe off some of that excess glue verify that you're yep see it shifted dang it why did it shift so you want to you want to 
You want to fix it while it's wet. You don't want to fix it while it's dry. If it shifts and it's dry, you still can fix it. You just have to sand it. But it's easier to do it while it's wet, in my opinion. And like I said, I know you guys know better ways to do this. So by all means, chime in. All right. So we're going to let that dry now. And we're ready to take these off after several hours of drying. Amazing how time flies just like that when you're on the video. So now I'm going to put some wings on the edge here and I'll show you how to do that. So you remember when I cut the back angles, I saved this piece here. I saved that little gappy piece because it's got a wedge to it. And then what I do is I slice them into little, little pieces, right? And see how they have like a little taper. They're thicker here, thinner here. And then what I'll do is then I will cut it at like a little diagonal here. And that diagonal is going to correspond with the, see how that looks right there? So I cut it at a diagonal and then I sand it also to be at an angle. This just saves time later on when I'm filing it. Now again, you want to get this edge here to be as flat as possible, especially on this seam right there. You want to get rid of all the glue and all the bumps and any dirt and debris. You want this to be totally smooth so that when you do glue it, there's no gap in those little lines so that it's like perfectly flush. All right, so let's glue it. The hardest part is just waiting for it to dry. Now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, the moment of truth. So this has been drying for several, several hours while I've been off goofing off, doing other things. And it's pretty hot here, as you can tell by the sweat on my brow. I'm supposed to get 98 degrees here today. All right, so I am going to just carefully take these edges off and hopefully not hurt this piece that's up there. Again, wish me luck. And just like that, look at that. So you're wondering how I did that. I just used wire cutters and just snipped around the edges carefully and then sanded it smooth with sandpaper. And uh, so now it's just ready for stain. But I think it's gonna look sharp, especially, especially paired with a matching Padron box, which you'll have to see in the next video. So if you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, comment, like, share, and don't forget, there is a virtual tip jar in the upper right-hand corner of my YouTube section. So, until next time, be reminded that six strings are definitely three strings too many.